Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. Now, we are right in the midst of learning about different ways to plot changes over time. And we've talked about line charts, and we've talked about area charts, and some other chart types. And today we're going to talk about the stream graph. And the stream graph is kind of like a stacked area chart, except that it doesn't have like a true zero baseline the way a stacked area chart does. And so the stream graph has more of an organic flowing shape that can be used to engage your readers and, and bring them into your visualization in ways that maybe some of these other chart types can't. And to help us understand how to read and the origins of the stream graph, we have Rebecca Pazos from the Straits Times out of Singapore. And Rebecca and her team created a great stream graph back in 2020 about the COVID pandemic. And so I invited her to come on to this series to talk about her work and uh, explain to us how a stream graph works. So Rebecca, over to you. Hi, I'm Rebecca Passos, and I work for The Straits Times in Singapore as an interactive graphics journalist. I'm here today to talk to you about the stream graph. So a few months ago, when coronavirus deaths passed 1 million globally, uh, we decided to use the stream graph to show how this changed um, region to region. And as it turns out, so did the Washington Post. and Spain's El País. So let's get into what is a stream graph. I'll start with what to me is a simple way to describe a stream graph. Say you are happily creating a stacked area chart and for seemingly no reason at all, we decide to move the Y axis up to the center somewhere. And bingo, this is what you call a stream graph. And it's so named because of the way it looks. It looks like streams across or down a page. What we think the stream graph can do is to show changes between broad themes over time. So say you have a data set that has very similar patterns, but in the, the categories, they, they appear at different times. So in this case, it's the acceleration of deaths and the slowing down of those deaths happening in regions, but at different times. Um, this chart does a good job of showing this in a very granular way, but also very eerily beautiful way. But there are some considerations we should take into account when using this chart. A stream graph done well is visually pleasing, but it can throw up a very plausible question. Why use a stream graph when any other chart, particularly a stacked area chart, might do? I mean, let's face it, pulling off a stream graph is not particularly easy. Everything from the grouping of the streams to the colors to the position of the y-axis all play a huge part in determining how the chart is visually perceived. So let me point you to the first known representation of this chart in the journalism world, created by the New York Times in February of 2008. So this chart was beautifully rendered in print and online but it did spark a plethora of comments from the quote unsavory to the fantastic. As discussed in this report by Lee Byron and Martin Wattenberg, which I recommend you read if you have the chance, um, if you'd like to know more details about the chart and also all the math behind it. But this New York Times version is actually not the first time this chart is known to have existed. A bit of a plug for the feminists out there. Uh, about 20 years ago in 2000, three women uh, Susan Harvey, Beth Hetzler, and Lucy Knoll actually published a prototype system called Theme River at an information visualization conference. In their report, which I also recommend you read here, the stream graph was originally called Theme River. So I'm not sure if it's the patriarchy at work, but we may never know why the name was changed from river to stream. Okay. So as for examples of this chart I really like, I would still probably stick with the New York Times version, um, just because in my opinion, it's the most sort of visually complete. Um, but I would love to see how they might do it now with all their skills in annotation and deconstruction applied to a scrolly telling explainer like what we tried to do at the Straits Times. I think this chart is great for communicating large data sets to a wider audience, but they need specially crafted stories to draw them along the journey of this chart. Um, so using visual techniques like scrolly telling or zoom, annotations, show and hide. 
But I'd end with something a little more interesting, uh, which was actually published this year called The Sign Stream. So this looks at how to reorder the layers in a way that those themes or those, those categories that have a greater trend or something more interesting to show are moved to the outer edges. So let me show you the example. And the ones that maybe don't have such an interesting pattern are moved to the center. So you can see how that really improves the visual perception of that chart. So if you're interested to know more, I do highly recommend checking out those three academic papers. And good luck with creating your next stream graph or river graph, whatever you'd like to call it. And thanks, Rebecca, for that great summary of what a stream graph is how to read it, and some of the origins in the academic literature. So I hope you will be able to see more stream graphs, maybe even create them and use them in your own work. They're a great way to engage your readers and uh, explore different types of data sets in this sort of organic, flowing looking shape. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series, and I've been your host, John Schwabish. Thanks so much for watching.